Okay, I know it's coffee break coming up, so I'm going to try and go extra, extra fast. So it's called selling data. And so we, we made reference to this before. It's basically a demonstration data set. And let's just pop ahead. Um, short story, it's a, uh, basically supposed to be a shared demonstration set. Um, as you could tell probably from my intro comments, um, I predominantly focus on the sales end of things. And I have historically always found it disastrous to try to present to customers with flowers or in the case of S1000D, bicycles or garages. And this would drive me crazy. So um, what we'd historically used, would, and it would take a lot of effort, and it turned out this exercise proved it to be a lot of effort as well, is to create a functionally realistic demonstration set that had a little bit of the grit of the real world. So when people saw it, it, it looked real. Um, and so that's, that's what it's done. So it's based on various customers' data uh, who have given permission, then remove proprietary details. I call it amplifying some of the texture, where, let's say, element occurrences and, and attribute occurrences are sort of um, sort of exaggerated a bit to make sure that we cover a variety of contexts, um, but still keeping it. So it, it winds up being about a uh, about a hundred instances. So pretty evenly split between concepts, uh, tasks, and references. Uh, a number of maps for doing different things. And uh, so what we'll do is we'll just take a quick look at it. So it's called the Thunderbird or Storm Cluster, and. I'm just going to, I don't know if this is going to torment our poor little, um, so very quickly, I'll just hop over here. Here is the data community, here is the repository. Um, just quickly, here is some of the metrics, so um, nothing too revolutionary there. Let's just go over to oxygen. So it is set up so that there's, uh, I also wanted to make sure that it was something that was easy for someone like me on the sales side to adapt it very quickly. So literally I show up at a, an organization, all I need to do is grab a few details. So the, the top 10 product name that they use, maybe some screenshots, a logo, and by changing a couple of files, which is perfect kind of demo to give to somebody on the sales side, but just changing a couple of things like the, the product name variables. So here it is with storm cluster, thunderbird, cluster view. Um, by allowing the sales guy to go in and say, oh, I'm in an enterprise CMS and whatnot, I can then run transforms that show the customer, you know, realistic content that kind of looks like it could be theirs. And even the design of the story is intended to be almost like portable. So it's some kind of cloud service. It could be Yarno's OT cloud service. You know, it's basically the idea there's something in the cloud, it's got some management services, it's got reporting, it's got quality control, and Therefore, it fits to a, a really quite wide range of scenarios. And in the military back in the 90s, we used to do that. We, and when we, we made demonstration data sets, it was always electronics equipment, because everybody, the Army, the Navy, the Air Force, Marines, everybody had electronics. So they could say, yeah, yeah, we have stuff like that. Anyway, pounding along. Um, just quickly, so when it renders, it starts looking like um, you know, the kind of manual they probably produce. So we'll just pop over, where did I want to go? Oh, we'll go down here somewhere. Hope this isn't freaking out. So just showing some of the, the, the details that are available, it, it's got this little grit. So again, some customer had a, you know, a query filter report with all kinds of details so that even their tables sort of carried lots of little goodies. And again, when you throw this up on the screen, people say, you know, that looks like the kind of things that we wrestle with. So I know I've seen like um, some of the people at Exeosoft using the data. I know Mekon is frequently demonstrating their data web using this data, and that, that makes me happy. Um, one of the other, so the selling, let's get to the selling data part. Um, when we do this, we can run, and I won't tempt fate or time and run it now, but basically I wanted to show that, yes, we can output different versions. So here we can, uh, wait a minute. I've got so many of these things open. Yeah. So here's one. So generating, you know, web help from the Thunderbird. 
with nice graphics done by my son. Um, all I intended to say, you know, this, this looks what it looks like. But I can then generate a, a mobile version um, for the customer I'm visiting, and suddenly I've plugged in the name of their tools, um, their images, and boom, it just, and this is literally within, you know, an hour of showing up on site. I can give them a taste of what we can do using their material. And just as the last selling thing, um, one of the outputs is say, well, you know, if I go into my, oh, I have to show. Okay, one of my options is to say, I'm going to run transforms that will take this content. So I've thrown in their material, and I'm going to throw it out in Word in what's called a sort of a proposal template. So what comes out looks like, and again, for, for, for us here, this is trivial, trivially uninteresting almost. Showing this to the sales executives and saying, you know, we were able to pull all these bits and pieces from the various technical materials that have already been prepared and map them against questions in the RFP and give it back to the bid management team in a format that they can go run and write whatever lies they want. This goes over great. So again, it's just using the data, adapt it quickly, use an available plugin with the toolkit, and boom, you're suddenly talking to the sales side of the organization, not the tech comm side. And why would we do that? <coughs> Anyone? Anyone? It's where the money is. <laughs> so, so that's the demonstration data set. I'll just go back to the slides. So what's next? It is part of the community. I would um, make the request and, and invocation that we look at actually throwing in materials. And you can do it in the rawest of forms. Basically, any candidate real-world content is interesting because it, in my mind, sort of improves the sort of biodiversity of the collection. So that's one. Um, the hardest part of this whole undertaking is to create a story. You wouldn't believe the fussing that went into creating the story around the Thunderbird, choosing the equipment type. You know, actually getting the content was a lot less work. Even editing it was less work than keeping a consistent story. So among the tasks that I see ahead is creating sort of extensions to the story around versioning, uh, translation scenarios, other things, because really it's about getting back to business scenarios. Um, of course, among the things I encourage everyone to uh, include this in their sales toolkit, because the more people, sorry, uh, using uh, DITA and the toolkit, uh, the better for our community. So that's, that's the super summary. Um, yeah. Hopefully, and we'll be early for coffee. Yeah, we we have some questions, so don't don't go yet. So first off, Joe, I'd like to say thanks for putting this together because this is something that a lot of us need, um, and most of us haven't taken the time to put together. So it's nice to be able to use yours. <laughs> good, good, good. Um, do you have any sense of the uh, degree of coverage that you have in these sample files? in terms of the data vocabulary, data spec? Uh, do we have like one instance of each element? Do we use all the attributes and that kind of stuff? The, the, let me just uh, say why I'm asking this question. I see a few people nodding their heads. Um, a bunch of us that create customizations, whether those are PDF plugins, HTML customizations, or whatever, um, have a need for uh, let's say some sample files that we can use to test the customizations to make sure that we have properly customized each of the elements that appear in DITA, and not just those that appear in the first version of our client's source material. So that when their authors decide to make a really creative use of one of those cool new DITA elements and discover that there's no styling for it, um, we're not caught with our pants down. Mm. So I'm just curious if oh, there's yeah. anything like that out there, and I'm afraid that there might not be, but before I start from scratch, it'd be kind of nice to know how f much coverage you've got and what you've got there. Yeah. So the answer with this particular collection is, is, is not too much coverage because it started from the story, from the scenario, and worked out. But, you know, and so there's, there's two levels of answer. One is um, part of what you're touching on is, is, is a, almost like a test suite kind of thing. And, and standards, um, you know, and I've, I've ranted about it at other, and I understand how big a job and how um, tough it can be is building a proper test library is, is tough business. Um, so that's one. Um, 
Certainly, though, uh, and then another level of the answer is really the, with individual project, with you know, customer engagements. There, is, uh, there are techniques, and I know it's one of the popular ones that we use, is we, we also run analyzers on people's collection of content to sort of rummage through and figure out, get a picture of what they've got, and even sort of build test suites from, their, from what the occurrences they really have. So we're not trying to cover scenarios that actually only turn out once in a million files or something like that. So that's the solution level of the answer. But certainly this one, you know, the demonstration set, uh, you know, I've, I've had teams of, of outstanding developers working for me, and at first they were resistant to what I would call business tests or functional, business functional tests because it was outside the, the precision and tight control they had over their unit tests. But eventually they warmed to it. <laughs> Because they wouldn't necessarily use it on every nightly build, but they would use it as part of key milestones to basically run the functionality against uh, uncontrolled sources. And at, you know, I had some developers who were almost monk-like in their purity. They wouldn't let me create any business scenarios that they felt I'd made up that would make the product look good, which of course I would do. You know, they knew me. Um, but as soon as I was bringing in scenarios from real customers, they said, well, then that's valid. It's kind of like a random sample. Yeah. Um, so I was going to say, um, out, so, so Joe uh, uh, donated this to the community, and I said, Joe, can I put this onto the community? And he said, yes. And I said, thank you very much. You're a great guy. Um, one of the things I did uh, was I took the, the original source, uh, which was uh, really reflected, did a <coughs> one, two, a little bit, and I um, added variants of it that use keys in more sophisticated and different ways, because I wanted to experiment with some of the stuff I was saying you should do. Um, so there is a little bit of a test case there uh, in the key space. I've also set up a pattern of having different versions of the same content, m primarily at the map level, but also somewhat in the topic level, that do things in different ways. Um, and so there's a, you know, if you wanted to add to that, you would be welcome to. Yeah. Yeah. And I would say, yeah, if you, have, if you have specific use cases that you would like to be able to test that, that still fit into this, you know, this is a realistic thing, um, please contribute them. Yeah, yeah. yeah and, and one of the other things, and actually on the preceding slide, I made a little side comment here, that I personally always like to have overarching business scenarios as a way to organize and exemplify use cases. So, you know, putting things into a context, in particular, that someone's going to pay for. But, again, that's just me. <laughs> so, um, a data developer's or, or open toolkit developer's perspective to this, uh, for years I've been pining for a test set that would test everything, every possible corner case, but a test material doesn't have to be entertaining. It can be full bar bass, um, list one, list two, list three. Totally. So, I think there are two different types of um, sets that we need to have one for sales that needs to be entertaining and easily modifiable to look something like real content and then something that tests all the possible permutations that some teenager with oxygen license might come up with. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's absolutely true. Yeah, a test case is a very, very specific undertaking. What I found really interesting, I gave a presentation years ago called Demonstration-Based Development, and it started with, why is Bill Gates always standing in front of the blue screen of death? And it's because as soon as you go to demo and you try to sort of put together a business scenario that someone's, for some reason, you always introduce particular instances and sequences of steps that somehow were not in your test suite. <laughs> and boom, blue screen of death. Break time. Thank you, Joe.